Okay, so you guys have a homework assignment due tomorrow, right? Right. <laughs> so are there any questions about that? I think, is it to do the join method? Yeah. So we went over the code for that um, last time. Are there any, has anybody tried it yet? Maybe because it's not due till tomorrow, you haven't done it yet. Oh, oh wait. Oh, that's a good question. There is something about not recognizing a random something or other. Yeah. Yeah, let me explain about that. I'm not sure if I'll be able if this will be helpful f for you to actually solve the problem, but the abstract sorter has within it one of the sorts that it has within it is quick sort. As it turns out, we will see in another day maybe or two that quick sort uses a random number generator. It uses the, what we will see is that it uses a random number generator to pick three elements at random from the array and then use the, from that sample, that three uh, element sample, it computes the median of that in order to estimate the median of the elements in the array so that it can do the split. And so that random thing is a C++ 11 feature. You might try, you know that, the, you know that, that, that library stuff that you have to put in to make it C++ 11? Did you remember to do that? Try that. I did the standard. But in order to compile that, it has to be, you have to make sure and do it with C++ 11. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Maybe we'll wait and see if you can get that. Yeah, it works. Ha! Huh. And the result is it works. It works because, because it wasn't recognizing. The, yeah, so we'll keep this, your question, in the video for future generations. <laughs> okay, any, uh, any other questions about that? The, the, the key takeaway from our presentation of, the, of how to do the merge sort, the join of the merge sort, is don't try to write the main program again and don't allocate your own temporary array to do the copying to do the merging into because it's already set up for you in the DP4DS distribution. All right? Okay, so today what we are going to do is we're going to look at some material that we skipped over last time. Uh, namely, we're going to look at the, at some of the, um, first thing we want to do is look at the preconditions and postconditions for the for the abstract sorter. So remember this is the template method pattern and um, we saw last time that the way this th this is structured is we have an abstract sorter which has a, specifies a sort, a split, and a join. And the sort is already written in a sorter. Now, we remember we have two different kinds of operations. Let's go back one slide. There's two kinds of methods in the template method pattern. There's the template method, which is the same, and then there are the primitive operations, which differ. So here, with the template method pattern, which one is the same? Which one is the template method? It's sort, right? And which one are the primitives? The split and the join, okay? So the, ab the sort is actually implemented in the abstract class, whereas the split and the join are each implemented as depending on the sort method in the subclasses. Now what I would like for us to focus on now is something we kind of skipped over, or we, we went over re rather quickly last time. This is the preconditions and the postconditions. Now before we do this, let's see if you guys can remember something from discrete structures. Uh, so this material is not in the book because, but it's, it'll be here because a, a, a lot of you guys have taken the discrete structures course here at Pepperdine. But look, do you remember when we were doing the Hoare triple? And what's the interpretation of the Hoare triple? Uh, if, yeah, we, oh, no, if, precondition is true, S executes. And S executes, it will do what? Okay, if the pre yes, that is that is correct. So if the precondition is true, and the statement S executes, 
it will terminate and the post condition is guaranteed to be true. That's the interpretation of the Hort triple. Now, I'm going to write down a theorem that you might remember, or you might not. <laughs> so check this out. This is P.15. Oh, you're doing this now? Oh, great. Okay, so look, if you, if you look up, if, or if you remember, or if you look up on your old equation sheet, P.15 is this. It's Q and then S and H and H, S, and R implies, it sounds like you have your equation sheet there. Q, what is it? Uh, S colon T. Semicolon oh, yeah, T. Uh, R. R. Now what we're going to look at now is a very specific instance of this. Because what does this say, you guys? First of all, let's start over here on the right-hand side. This is implies, right? We're going to start over here on this side. What is the semicolon? What does that mean? Composition. Composition. That's this statement executes, and then after that, this statement executes. So this is what happens when one statement executes after another one. Are you with me? And what this is saying is, and so this is the whole triple for one statement executing after another one. But what is this on the, what is the antecedent? The antecedent is what? A whole triple here, a whole triple here with what? With S, and then a whole triple here, oh wait, I wrote that down wrong. This is T. Is that right? It's T, right? Yeah. Okay, so here is a whole triple with S, and here is the Hoare triple with T. And what this says is that if this is a valid Hoare triple, and this is a valid Hoare triple, then what? Ed? This is a valid Hoare triple, right? The comma means S and T are both. The semicolon, so it's the semicolon means this statement executes first and then followed by this statement. Are you with me? Yes. So that's the sequence. It's the sequence operator. It's se okay. the sequential. Actually, we will see that in um, computer systems, we will do some things concurrently, and we will see that the concurrent separator is comma. It's, that's what it's going to be, previews of coming attractions. But this is, but this, is this statement executes, and then, and then after that, this statement executes. All right? That's the meaning of the semicolon in guarded command language. But look, you guys, what does this say? This says that what? What is this H? This H is the what of what? What is this H? This H is the what of what? It's the post condition of the first one. If the post condition of the first one is the what? Precondition of the second one, then what? Then this is a valid or triple. Are you with me? Is everybody clear? And we proved that. Well, I don't know if we proved it. It might have been an exercise. I don't know. But anyway, that's one of, the, one of our theorems. And look, you guys, that's exactly what's happening here. That's exactly what's happening here. Because look, let's take a look at what sort, let's take a look at the precondition and postcondition of sort. The precondition of sort is what? Zero is less than or equal to what? Low. Low and high is less than? the capacity of the array, right? And what's the post condition of sort? It's sorted. A between low, A, low dot dot high is sorted. So all the ones, all the elements of A between low and high included, including both, are sorted, right? But what does sort do? Let's go down one slide here. Look, what does sort do? Sort says if low is less than high, int, mid, and so what does sort do? It calls what? Split. split. And then here, it calls split. And then after split, what happens? Sort. Sort. And then after sort, what happens? Here, sort what, I ha what happens after sort? sort again. Join. Well, sort again. And then what? Then join. 
and then join. And so what we have here is a sequence of statements, each one of which has a what? Each one of these statements, each here, back here, each one of these has a what? Back here. A precondition and a postcondition. So how do we, so what's the software design principle here? The what of the what? The what? The precondition should be the what? Postcondition. postcondition of the previous one. And if it is, we know that, that, that everything works. Is everybody, is, you see, this is a, a direct application of what we did in discrete structures. Okay? So let's take a look at these individual precondition and po preconditions and postconditions. The preconditions of split, we mentioned this before, low is less than high. Now what was low and what was high? So this one was low and this one was high, right? Oh, high. And as long as low is less than high, there has to be at least how many? Two. 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 If low equals high, there's only one. And if low is less than high, there's none. And that's legal, but anyway. But in order to a split, low has to be less than high. That's a precondition for split. Are you with me? And then what's the postcondition for split? low is less than mid, is less than or equal to So what happens is split computes the mid. Now can the mid ever equal low, yes or no? Yes. No. no. In post condition, it never can. If there's only two elements, low has to be, mid has to be what? Has to be high. Now does everybody see that? Okay. So low is less than mid is uh, Low, low is less than mid, which in turn is less than or equal to high. And then what's join? Precondition is what? The same. Low the is the same as the what? Precondition pre, pre, pre -condi of split. Are you with me? And then sorted, uh, and then uh, you know after the join, the, uh, the precondition of the join is that a low dot dot mid minus one is sorted, and a mid dot dot uh, a mid dot dot high is sorted. That's a precondition. And then the postcondition is that what? The whole thing is sorted. Uh, is everybody clear? So now look. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this code for sort and follow through those preconditions and postconditions. So what sort does, first of all, it's, it does what? If what? The first ex executable statement in, the, in sort is what? If what? Low is less than high. Right? So, and what's the first thing that happens in split? Uh, as, and, oh, oh, sorry. And so the first statement is, if low is less than high. If low is not less than high, none, split doesn't execute. Are you with me? So what does this code do? It guarantees the precondition of what? Sort. No. Split. No. Split. split. If low is less than high, then we call split. So that guarantees the precondition of split. So look, you guys, here it is. The sort precondition is zero is less than or equal to L, and H is less than the capacity. So the length, can the length be zero? Can we sort an element? Can we sort an array with zero, with no elements? Yes or no? Yes, we can, because it says zero is less than or equal to L. L is low. So yes, we can assort an element. We can sort an array with no elements. Can we sort an array with one element? Yes. Can we sort an array with two? Yes. Three, four, five. All the way up to, but it's got to be less than cap. Is everybody clear? Okay. And so now, and so that's the sort precondition. So that is true. Now, wh now what does sort do? Calls what? says if low is less than high, and what does it call? No. What does sort call? Split. Split. It calls split. Are you with me? It calls split. Now, what's the precondition of split? Low is less than high. But is that guaranteed? Yeah. Yes, because the guard of the sort, are you with me? Do you see how these preconditions and postconditions feed into each other? So, so what happens is, uh, sort has a guard. It has an if guard. It's if L is less than H. And, and that guarantees that the precondition of the split is, is, is uh, satisfied. Does everybody see this? And then what does split do? Split, and the split does A, low, mid, high. And what was mid called by? You remember mid was called by what? 
It's called by reference, so that changes the value of mid. And so after that, after that, what did we say the post-conditional split was? Can mid ever be equal to low, yes or no? No, no it's got to be greater than. But it can be less than or equal to high. So that's the post-conditional split. So if that is, is satisfied, then what does it do? It calls sort, right? So that calls sort recursively. So, so it calls sort A low mid minus 1 and sort A mid high. <clears throat> and either one of those, either one of low or mid minus 1, either one of mid or high, they could be whatever. You, either, either one of these could have zero elements in them. The recursive calls could have zero or one. You see how that works? And then what's the post condition of sort? Each one of the, what's the post condition of, of the sorts? Do you remember? What do the, what do the sorts do? They do what? Right. Right? So what happens is, but that's the joint precondition. So the post condition of the sort is that sorted A, L dot dot M minus 1, and sorted A, M dot dot H. Right? And furthermore, that what? L is less than M is less than to H. But M never changes. The sort never changes mid. Right? So that carries through. But look, that's the precondition of what? Join. Of join. And then what's the join post condition? Sort it so that so therefore sorted that that therefore the sort post condition is satisfied because so as long as these do their individual jobs we we've, we've proved that sort is correct so now is all you have to do is just make sure that each one of these does their individual job now do you, do you see how this works you guys this is really this is really this is software engineering right preconditions and post conditions and contracts and everything like that. And at all, and the, the main idea here is, is based on is this P15. This, this when you have two, to have two executes that, that uh, two statements that execute one after the other, the, pre, the post condition of the one is the precondition of the second, of the one that follows. And if you maintain that, then everything is correct. Yeah. So the joint precondition corresponds to this delayed post condition? The join precondition is that is that low is less than mid, which is less than or equal to high. And we know that's true because that is the, that is the split post condition right. and the sorts never change M. Oh, okay. Yeah, the sorts never change M. Sorts never change M. And then the rest, the sorted part, that is like the specific precondition for joint. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and here, let's go back and look at that. See here if we look at See, join, pre, see, check this out. Here's in, here it is in the code, Georgia. Precondition, low, less than mid, less than high. high. Pre, Precondition, sorted A, low, mid, not A, sorted A. Mid. Now, good software always has the preconditions and the postconditions specified. You are going to run across a lot of not good software in your c computing careers. <laughs> but, you know, a really, a really good suite of software will have everything specified what the preconditions are and what the postconditions are and then if you follow those guys and if you use that library the way according to the contract then everything is correct Every, nothing will crash okay so now let's take a look and here is a is a diagram of the split primitive operation and in part a this is figure 4.8 and in part a of the figure we have the picture in general for a large array, more than a couple or three elements. And we see what happens is that mid points to the first element of the second subarray, and mid minus one points to the last element of the first array. Are you with me with that? And what is and the, the array with the smallest number of segments is shown in part B of the figure. All right. So um, in, in case there's only two elements and you do a split, mid, just remember, mid can never equal low. So, so this picture is low would equal mid minus one and high would equal mid in that case. Do you see that small? That's the smallest case. All right. And on this slide, we also have um, the split, which is what does this. So the precondition is that low is less than high. The postcondition is low less than mid, less than or equal to high. And these are the two situations, one in general and one with the smallest. 
Okay, so let's move on to figure 4.12. Now, we're going to do this occasionally. You guys know what a call tree is? You know, it's a, a very useful tool for analyzing. Is it looking at what executes? Yeah, it's looking at what calls, you know, what function calls an, another function or sometimes itself. So this is, that's right. So here in this previous figure, here, this figure 4.10, shows a, an array that's indexed from 0 to 9. So the elements are 90, 20, 80, 50, 40, 10, 95, 60, 30, 70. And the question is, how many times, or how does the function call itself recursively? What are those function calls? So I think we, sh we can figure it out by, s by looking at this call tree now. So do you see that the, the uh, node at the root says a0.9, right? Now what that means is that the main program calls the merge sorter with a low of what and a high of what? Low of zero a low of zero and a high of nine. Now, now, do you remember the code for how the merge, how the merge sort did the split? How, what did it set mid to? Yeah, here it is in figure 4.9. It's low plus i plus one, quantity divided by two, integer division, right? So what's zero plus nine plus one divided by two? Zero plus nine plus one is 10 divided by two is five. Okay, so now do you see then, let's go to the call tree, you see then, and furthermore, if mid is 5, then it calls a sub, what was, what was the first one? The one on the left, it was low, low dot dot what? Low mid, minus mid minus 1. So mid minus, if mid is 5, mid minus 1 is what? 4. four. So you see the left child of the root is a0 dot dot 4. So that's the first recursive call. And then the second recursive call on the right is a mid dot dot high. Right? So if mid is 5 and high is 9, then that's a5.9. So does everybody see how that works? But you know, before, it, 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 it doesn't call it first the left one, then the right one. First, it calls first the left one, but then the left one recursively has, calculates its mid. So what's 0 plus 4 plus 1 divided by 2? 2.5. Yeah, but it's integer division. So it's 2. So therefore, and so if mid is 2 in that case, it goes from what? 0 dot dot 1, so you see that's the left child of the left child. And on the, and the other time it calls it, it's what? If mid is 2. It's from mid to high, right? So 2 to what? To 4. So you see, you see that? So that's the right child of the left child of the root. Does everybody see how that works? And so on down. And you can see, and so, th so this is a picture of the call tree. So look. Sometimes, uh, you know, the trees are of unequal height. So a2.4 calls a, what's 2 plus 4 plus 1 divided by 2? And then 3 minus 1 is 2, so it calls a2.2, which then doesn't call, and it doesn't, doesn't make a recursive call. And then, so it's 2.2 two, and then 3.4, but 3.4 will call 3.3 three, three and 4.4. Four. All right, does everybody see that? Now, do you guys know the order of execution of this? Isn't it a zero? zero? It's, a, it's zero, not, it goes from zero nine to what? Zero four. To zero four to what? To zero, zero one to what? Zero to zero zero, and then it returns back up to what? No. Zero one, and then it goes down to what? One one, one, one and then it goes back up to zero one, four. one zero one, zero four. then to zero four, then to two four, then to two two, and then back up to two four, and then back, down to 3, 4, and then down to 3, 3, and then back up to 3, 4, and then down to 4, 4, and then up to 3, 4, and then 2, 4, and then 0, 4, and then 0, 9, and 5, 9, 5, 6, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 5, 6, 5, 9, 7, 9, 7, 7, 7, 9, 8, 9, 8, 8, 8, 9, 9, 9, 8, 9, 7, 9, 5, 9, 0, 9. And then it's sorted. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and you see, you see that when it, when it does that left one first, it comes back up, that's figure... At the end of that, that is figure 4.10c. Mm -hmm. 
You see, that's that's that 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 corresponds to going down to that left child, left subtree, and all the way back up. All right. Does everybody see how that works? Now, you guys, the question is, what is the performance of merge sorter? Now, how many here? How how many? Let's go back to this tree. How many of these? How many of these things executed? What, what's n in this case? Ten. N is ten. Right. And so my question is, if you if you, uh, it's like your homework assignment. If you did a merge sort with ten thousand and it was this long, and you did it with twenty thousand, how long would it take to execute? You know what the you see what I'm saying? So we need to figure out, we need to do a little statement execution count, uh, an asymptotic statement execution count. Right? Does anybody, well, let's do it. So, <laughs> watch this now. So how do we figure out what the big theta is of merge sort? What's the, now we have tools now. Get out your toolkit. We've got tools for being able to analyze recursive procedures. This is a recursive procedure, right? So what's, what's our program? What's, what's the status, Gladys? You have to, first you have this two, you gotta do two things. First you gotta do something and then you gotta do something. Ah. What's, say it again? You gotta, you gotta write down the recurrence. Now, is everybody with me? Look, we, we have all these tools that we, we, just, we just, now we're going to use them. We got, so the first thing we've got to do is do what? Write, write the recurrence. So look, here's my question. Here is sort, if low is less than high, split, sort, sort, join. We've got to write the recurrence. So if I ask you, write the recurrence, what would, you, what, what would the recurrence be? We, we need to, now, now we have to re think about what's in each, pe each of these pieces of code. So what's it going to be? How, what does a recurrence look like? What's, what do you write down here? Do the base case? T of n. Yeah. The base case yeah. So the base case is for n, yeah, 1 or 0 or whatever. Let's say 1. Oh, actually, okay, tell me, <laughs> it's actually, if, if, what is that first if statement? If what? What is that first statement? If low is what? If low is less than high, blah, blah. Well, what if low isn't less than high? Then it's when it doesn't do it. Yeah, then it's just, it's just that one if statement. It's just that one if statement. It's the one if. So, so, big, big theta of what? One. So, big theta of one. If low is greater than or yeah. So that would be if n is what? Let's, let's do this in terms of n. What is n? One, high plus one. It's high. No, no, no. It, no, no, no. It, it, we're sorting from low to high. So what is n? And it's it's high. high minus, I think it's high minus low plus one, maybe? High minus low plus one. I think it's high minus low plus one. Because if we're sorting from zero to three, that's four elements. So high plus, yeah, high minus low high, plus one. high minus low plus one, right? So that would be n. So let's just say I don't know. Let's just say n equals one. It could be zero, whatever. That's close enough for government work. I'm not sure what's going to pop up here <laughs> when I press the next button. But now comes the really interesting part. Now, how do we analyze this? The rest of this. Now tell me. Now we're doing, we're talking merge. This is the merge sort. Now can you tell me? So let's take them in order. What's the big theta of split for merge? One. Excellent. One. Why? Because what is the code for merge? It, it does this plus this divided by plus one divided by two. No loops. Does everybody see that split is big theta of one? All right, but that's not. But that's not all. After that, big theta of one become, comes a what? Source. 
Oh, sorry. Now. That's the T. So why is it n divided? Why is that? Why is the first sort T of n divided by two? Because you're breaking the Because because. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! We have this. We have these sudden aha moments. Another aha moment. Yeah. So what? It's it's n divided by two because because the mid is in the middle and it's and it sorts half of them. Okay. So that's going to be so the first sort is going to be t of what? How how much time? N over two. T of n over t of n over two. Right. Are you with me? And then the second one is going to be what? T of n over two. So t of n over 2 plus t of n over 2 is what? 2 t of n over 2. So this is going to be 2 t of n over 2. Now, is everybody clear? This is super, super critical. That was referring to the two sorts. This was referring to the two sorts is correct. Yeah. And then join is 1. I think I understand, but I just want to like clarify. It, why is it 2 t of n over 2 instead of T of n over like it is t of n over two plus t of n over two. Well, how come each one executes with each the one n is separate two. instead of just separate. doing like n over two plus n over two is n. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Good, good, good question. Good question. Do you see that sort a low min minus one first it executes? Oh, like it, it does itself. It does itself, and then after that, sort a mid high executes. Gotcha. That was a really good question. Okay. Is everybody okay? Join is not one. Because why? But how does join work? You're coding. You're going to be coding it up. You're going to be coding it up. What are you going to put in there? How are you going to do join? Aha! Uh -huh. Singly or doubly nested? A single loop. And it's going to go. It's just going to be a single loop, and it's going to go. Remember how how we did how it was going to work. K was just going to go what? Oh, excuse me. Here, look. Here, look. See, look here on Figure 4.11, Part A. K is going to go from what? Zero, zero. From well, from no, from low to high. It's going to go from low to high, right? Which in this case will be in, and the, and it's just going to go once, and each time it goes through there, you'll choo, choo, boom, boom. But now wait a minute. There's one other thing. What about part E? How are you going to do this? Another what? Oh no. Oh no, it's another loop. Is this going to be n squared? It's going to be 2n. They're not nested. They're, They're not nested. Loops. Good point. Very good observation. They're not nested. It's two loops. Right? One after the other. So you could say 2n. But 2n is big theta of what? n. n. Does everybody see? So here we have, we have to do a plus a big theta of n. Because we know that big theta of 2n equals big theta of n. And there's the 1. Yeah, but you know, this theta of n includes the, the 1. Because we know the big theta of n plus any constant is big theta of n. That was a good question. Does everybody see how that, how that works? Okay, so look. So here we go. Did we get it right? What is the recurrence? Boom. I said less than or equal to. But anyway, here it is. Yeah. So for the, the two different t of n over 2's, mm -hmm. um, the one thing I'm confused on is if the array has an odd number of elements, then could it one of them? Yeah, that's a really good question. That is a really good question. Now let me just tell you mathematics. So the question is what happens if it has an odd number of elements? And furthermore, what happens if as you divide by 2, this is integer division? So technically, basically what we are assuming here is that the number of elements is an exact power of two, and we're going to, always going to be able to get it in half each time without, you know. And so we are technically we are only proving it for, you know, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four elements. But you know, there's a way. It's beyond the scope of this course, but there's a way to show that it works. That if you if you do that, then that, that's true for all the ones in between. Okay. But that was a good question. There is a we have to kind of finesse that a little bit. Okay. All right. All right, so that was the first step. But what's the second thing we have to do? Solve the we have to solve the recurrence. All right, now. 
um, this recurrence has a big theta. So instead of solving the recurrence, I'm actually going to do, uh, didn't you have to do a, a homework exercise? Yeah. Look, this is, um, this is actually exercise 4-3. Here's an exercise. And I think you did this. So here's the solution to one of the homework problems you just handed in, I think. Okay, and it's to do this. It's to prove that T of N equals N log N is the solution to, is the solution to T of N equals, and here we're going to have some actual numbers, 2 and 2t n over 2 plus n. So this is going to be 2 if n equals 2, and it's going to be 2 n over 2 plus n if n is greater than 2. So now, you know, you could throw some other constants in here and you'd and you could prove it be, to be slightly different but 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 the, na the but the main thing is it's going to be what how whatever other constants you put here for this one and if you put some plus 1 or plus 2n you know you but what you will get will be of the order of n log n it will be the, it will have this same form so let's just prove it for this one all right so here's the proof so what's the, how, what do we start with base case and what do we always write down for the base? What do, we, how, what do we always write down first? What is it we're trying to prove? Yeah, this whole thing. So we start with this whole thing. So T of N equals N log N. And then what do we invoke the very first time? And what is the base case? So the base case is N equals 2. So oh, here, let's say base case N equals 2. So let's put that in, and we have t of what? Two. t of 2 equals 2 log 2. And let's do some math, and that gives us what? t of 2 e equals, is this 2? Yeah. Because log of, oh, sorry, that should have been log 2. Because the log of 2 is 1, right? So t of 2 equals 2. And now what do we invoke? definition of T of N and what does that tell us? Two. So two equals two. So prove the base case. Alright, now what's the famous thing that we have to do for the induction case? What's the famous thing we have to write down? The sentence. The sentence. Must pr now, what must we prove? Uh, not t of n plus 1 this time. Oh, oh, two, two, two n. Yes. And what is it that we're trying to prove? T of 2n. T of 2, yes. So must prove. Must prove. T of what? 2n. 2n equals what? 2n. Equals 2n times what? The log of what? 2n. Assuming what? Assuming t of n equals n log n as the what? And it's not the base case, right? <laughs> Right? And so now how do we always prove this? Now, well, first of all, now that we've written down what we've got to prove, we only have two choices. We either start, we, we, we want to prove this, and we either start with the left-hand side and get to the right, or start with the right-hand side and get to the left. And we always do what? Start with the left-hand side. So, proof. So, T of 2n equals by what? What do we invoke first? Definition of T of n. Definition of T of N with what replaced by what? 
with n replaced by 2. And why can we do that? Because that, that's the definition. It's true in all states, and we can use textual substitution. All right? So what is t of n with n replaced by 2n? It's 2 times t of what? 2 times t of, yeah, let's go ahead and say 2n divided by 2. And then what? Well, no, we're doing a specific one. We're doing that specific, yes, plus 2n. Is everybody clear? And this equals by some high complicated math. Taking the derivative of the hypergeometric Hilbert space. So is what? 2t of n plus 2n. But, but now, now what do we invoke? The inductive hypothesis equals by inductive hypothesis what? 2, now what, is this, what was our inductive, oh here it is. Assuming this is what? n log n, right? So 2 n log n, but we still have this plus 2 n. Oh my goodness, now what are we going to do? Because what are we trying to get this to? We're trying to get it to math, so this is going to be 2 n and then log n plus 1. All right. We'll continue over here. And this equals by the fact that 1 equals what? So this equals by some math that 1 equals what? Uh, two. Log base 2 of 2. So this is 2n log n plus log 2. But we know that by math that the log of a plus the log of b is what? Math log a plus log b equals log a uh, log. Oh, sorry, log a times b, right? Log a times b. Okay, so this equals two n log two n, which is what? what we were trying to prove, so boom. So look, you guys, now we remember this forever. Amen. So the solution to the recurrent, and so therefore, what is it? It's, it says, what did we say the solution was? Here, it's this. So n log n. So, it's, so t of n is big theta of n log n. We just proved that the merge sort is big theta of n log n. Wait. Yes. How? Because this, because we wrote down the recurrent because we see that a recurrence that has this form has solution t of n equals n log n. Now, trust me, if you just put a different number here and, a, and put a coefficient here and you put some other integers here, it'll it'll still be n log n. Are you with me? So how do we know to put t of 2n instead of n plus 1? Because that, yeah, that keeps cropping up. That question keeps cropping up. The question is, how, how do we, why do we say 2n instead of n minus 1? The reason is because the recurrence has an n over 2 instead of an n minus 1. Okay. It's because the original, it's the form of the original uh, recurrence. Is it, the, re, the recurrence aspect of it, the... Has a, it has an n divided by 2 instead of n minus 1. If, you, if it had an n minus 1, then you would prove n plus, n plus 1 assuming n. Okay. So if you had n uh, times 2 there, your proof would be n over 2? Yeah, but if it were n times 2, yeah, it'd be infinitely, it, it, there would be, well, no. Because if it's, because what, what, what that, here's, what, here's what that would mean. That would mean that each time you call it recursively, it would take twice as long. And you would never be progressing towards the base case. And it would blow up. So it would be infinite. Okay. Yeah. So that's like saying, have you stopped beating your wife? I can't say yes or no. Either way, I admit I beat my wife. 
<laughs> you know, you say, if it's this, well, it can't be that because the, the algorithm would be, you know. Anyway. All right, are we good? Okay, good deal. See you tomorrow.